In this lesson on grade 12 trigonometry, we're going to have a look at the reduction formulas that you did in grade 11 and how we're going to use them along with the new identities of grade 12. So in grade 11, you started using the system of axis and we used the different reduction formulas to change angles to an acute angle in the first quadrant. Today we're going to have a look at how we're going to use these reduction formulas along with our identities to simplify trig expressions. Examples. Simplify the following. In example 1, we can see that we have an expression with two terms, and in each of these two terms we have two trig functions. None of these trig functions are acute angles yet, and that is always our first aim. Change all the angles to acute angles in the first quadrant. So we're going to start off with sin of 360 minus alpha. And that is in our fourth quadrant, where only cos is positive. So sin will have a negative value in the fourth quadrant. So if we want to change this to sin of the acute angle alpha, we have to add the minus in front. And we will have the same type of questions for every single one of these trig functions. When you want to use your reduction formulas, you always have the following questions. You start off asking yourself, in which quadrant am I working? And your second question, in this quadrant, is this specific trig function positive or negative? And this will help you to know that when you change it to an acute angle in the first quadrant, do I need to add that negative value in front or not? So our next function will be cos of 180 minus theta. And that is in our second quadrant where only sin is positive. So for cos, we are going to have here negative cos of theta. Our next trig function is cos of 360 minus alpha, which is in our fourth quadrant where cos is positive. So it stays positive and becomes cos of alpha. And the last one we have is sin of 180 plus theta, which is in the third quadrant where tan is positive. And we are working with sin, so it has to become negative sin of theta. In my next step, I'm going to simplify per term. My first term at the moment still has two signs, but a minus multiplied with a minus is a plus. So it simply becomes sin of alpha cos of theta. And my second term is a plus times a minus. So that becomes minus cos of alpha sin of theta. Next up, we will have to identify the correct compound or double angle identity to simplify this further. And even though these identities will be given to you on your formula sheet in the exam, it is a very good idea to know them by heart. This makes recognizing them or identifying them in a question much easier. So in our first example, we have the right hand side of the third identity and we are going to change it to the left hand side to simplify. So this will become sin of the first angle alpha minus the second angle theta. In example 2, we now also have a negative angle and an angle bigger than 360 degrees. So we're going to start off with our negative angle. Now, cos of a negative angle will be exactly the same as cos of the positive angle. Easy way to think about that is if we look at the cos graph. In your cos graph, whether you have a specific positive value or that same negative value, you you will get the same y value or the same ratio, so you can simply ignore that minus. For sin and tan, you will have the same value but with the opposite sign, so you add a negative in front. Our next trig function is cos of 360 plus theta. Anything bigger than 360 degrees means we've gone right around and started our next circle. This means we need to subtract 360 degrees as many times as needed to get to an acute angle. So we're going to start off subtracting 360 degrees. If we do that, we are left with simply cos of theta. 
Our third trig function is cos of 90 minus theta. Now, the 90 minus, we need to remember, is very important that sin and cos need to swap around. So when I do this one, 90 minus is my first quadrant. So cos is positive there, but now it changes to sin of theta. And my last one is 540 plus theta. So once again, bigger than 360 degrees. So in my first step, I'm going to start off by simply subtracting 360 degrees. And that means it will become sin of 180 plus theta. In my next step, the first term I'm going to simplify by simply writing cos squared theta. And in my second term, I still need to change the orange part into an acute angle. Now, 180 plus is in my third quadrant where tan is positive. So this will have to become negative sin of theta. And now I can simplify that second term even more. A plus times a minus is a minus and sin squared theta. And here I need to identify another double angle or compound angle identity. And in this case, this will become cos of 2 theta. In example 3, our first trig function is already an acute angle, cos squared theta. Our next one is 90 plus, which is once again a co-function, and that means cos will have to change to sin. This is in the second quadrant where cos is negative, and that means we will have to change this to negative sin of theta, and this still has to be squared. Our third trig function is 180 plus, so that is in the third quadrant where tan is positive, so cos will be negative and there's already a minus in front. So it changes to positive cos of 2 alpha. In the denominator, we once again have our co-function 90 plus alpha, which is second quadrant where sin is positive. So this changes to cos, but because originally it was sin, it stays positive and then has to be squared. So now I'm going to simplify the sin squared was negative, so now it becomes positive sin squared theta. The cos 2 alpha, I'm going to leave like that for this step. And in the denominator, we have cos squared alpha. Now you need to identify two of your previously known identities. The first one is grade 10 or 11. Cos squared plus sin squared is 1. And then we have a double angle identity, cos 2 alpha. So I'm going to start off by changing cos squared plus sin squared to 1. And then for my cos double angle, I now have three options. All of them will work, but I'm going to choose to use the one with only cos in because the rest of my expression consists of only cos. So I'm going to change that to 2 cos squared of alpha minus 1. So now I can simplify, 1 minus 1 is 0, so I'm left with 2 cos squared alpha divided by cos squared alpha, and that will give me 2. So today we've seen that when you simplify trig expressions, your first aim is to get all the angles in terms of acute angles, and this we do by using our reduction formulas. To use our reduction formulas, we always ask ourselves, in which quadrant am I at the moment? And what is the sign that accompanies this trig function in that quadrant? After we've done that, we move on to using our identities, which we did in grade 11 and the new grade 12 ones, and then we can simplify.